Okay, so pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 18, this meeting of the LSSE commission is being conducted via remote participation. We're gonna do a roll call now. So I'm Meg Rosa, chair. Everybody can go around and introduce themselves. Yusuf Fidel. Sarah Marshall. Carolyn Mailer. Rebecca, Rebecca Demling. Stephanie Jack. Victor Nunez Ortiz. And Barb Bills, uh, staff liaison director. All righty. Okay. So, do, do I say the rest? Just that the meeting is being recorded and um, maybe broadcast on Amherst Media and the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. And we can call our meeting to order now at 6.08 p.m. Very good. All right. Um, the next item is public comment. I see no other attendees. So there at this time is in public comment. Should someone come in later, we can add it to the untimed items um, at the end of the um, agenda. So we'll skip immediately then to uh, CPA proposals and um, a quick update. So this came quickly on us, I think, and, and quite frankly, with COVID and everything else going on, um, we had a meeting of staff just a couple of weeks ago to sort of prioritize what might be um, the top priorities for uh, the um, for, for recreation and also priorities for the other categories um, that um, that's housing and historical um, that might come forward, which we I don't really have any say in or whatnot. But um, I think the ones that I'll present to you tonight and um, would like to get your support on are, are quite obvious ones. So and they're things that we have talked about before. So th the first one um, which is, I believe, one of the number one priorities is the, oh, where did my little sheet go? My sheet sheet. The replacement of the pavilion at Groff Park. And as many of you, the one on the lower, lower, lower area of Groff Park, it's, it, I took some photographs um, of that, uh, like a week ago before I did the last week before I turned in the proposal and it is in tough shape. Um, the roof is very decayed, bent. Um, it's on a ground, you know, basically ground. There's no cement platform under it or anything. So it's standalone right there. Um, so that looking to replace that and it caught, and so I, I went ahead and submitted that proposal. Um, and that was a $45,000 proposal that includes, uh, demolition, uh, installing a new pad. Um, I don't believe there'll be much permitting. I believe that was done, at least that's what Nate told me, um, Nate Malloy from the um, planning department, um, so that there won't be uh, permitting involved because it was permitted as part of the original plan uh, for the restoration and, and refurbishment of, of the playground and the, um, the spray park area. And it was in that first proposal, it was what we called an alternate project. So it was not, not done because the bids came in at such a, a level that the alternates were not included. So we're looking to finish that project. The second one is uh, the first, as you know, of it, all of you or some of you who were involved, at least two of you, three of you, um, in the, the master plan for the downtown recreation uh, site, the fields, and so forth. The first phase is going to be a war memorial pool house design, redesign. The building is, uh, nine, is older than I am, believe it or not. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's time to, and it's, uh, it's almost, it, it's in tough shape. As you know, uh, the, the bricks have become uh, so decayed that water actually penetrates uh, through them. There are, there's some the structural problems there are, are many, many. So we're going to look at that. So that'll be the first thing to do a design for that. And the third one, another obvious one, is the sand, for, for you, Carolyn, someone who swims there daily, 
at uh, Mill River Pool, uh, sandblasting the pool and uh, putting in, um, it, it's basically a ceiling element um, so that we don't have to repaint that thing to the tune of almost $5,000 annually. Uh, so it will save us, it's very cost saving. I don't have a price on that. DPW is, is working on that proposal and uh, as well as the War Memorial pool house design. So those are three, the three big ones that pop out. All of them fairly not, I don't think there's anything there that's gonna be, you know, it's not, we're not talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably in no more than 50 for each of those. Um, certainly the price on the pavilion, that's from quotes that we received and we added because of inflation and so forth a certain percentage to make sure that we have enough money and we don't have to go back there <laughs> to ask for more money. So there should be money available to do that, plenty of money. Uh, so those are the three. Um, so uh, let's open that up for some discussion. And then when we're through with the discussion on those and questions, we can have Sarah maybe update to us on what's happening with the committee, what the latest is. Barb, can you give us a little timeline on each of those? The time, I can give you a timeline on the, well, these are for FY 22, 22 right. <laughs> so yeah, and you know how the fiscal year yeah. start in calendar 21, but go, so we're talking at least a year out for completion. All, th all three on kind of the same start and finish yeah. kind of schedule. Yeah. Okay. Think, yes. The fi the fi if they're approved. Or if they're recommended by the CPA committee, and then if town council passes the motion to fund them, then the funds don't become available till July 1st next year. So mm -hmm. they can't do anything. Nobody can do anything until then. Okay. So we'd look to, I'd hope to start once, for instance, you're talking about member of Miller River Pool. I would hope that would start in the fall after we close, but it generally takes till the spring of the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a lot easier, the project like the Groff Park um, Pavilion, which I, I am kind of overseeing. That's, you know, it's basically, we have a, um, a vendor who's on the state contract list. So there's no, I don't believe we're going to, it's going to have to go out to bid. So that should be very quick, quick to implement. And the building itself is prefabricated. So it's a, it's the same pavilion that you, that's on the upper level. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sarah. Would it have any picnic tables or any kind of furnishings fixed in place or it's just a, just a slab and a pavilion? Uh, just the slab and the pavilion and then we'll get the amenities. Will um, there be, I'm sorry. Go which ahead. will be picnic tables and such. Right, movable. My will, there, will it be accessible? Is there going to be yes. a path or something or? I don't, there won't be a path that I, I believe this is just the pavilion. So there's no, there won't be an accessible path down to that as part of this project. Are any of these possibly going to go forward without having CPA money? Probably not. No, I, I mean that. Remember last year, none of our capital projects were moved forward because of the situation. Obviously, we are budgetary wise. So we're, we're to a point where we really rely heavily on the CPA funding to um, make improvements to uh, these areas in the recreation field. The, um, you know, we can talk about the capital, probably we'll talk about that next month, but it'll be the same items that were on last year's, last fiscal year's, um, ask, if you will. Becky. Um, my question is, will the design of the new bathhouse be in line with kind of the tiered proposals from the field working group? Yes. Like the reposition to the other side, like. I believe be so. Yeah, I think it's going to go out. Yeah, so that was a lot of public input involved in that. And there'll be public input for this design as well. You know, it's sort of the processes, the processes that we had when we did the design for Groff Park where the people come, you know, you hire the designer, the diner, he comes out, he, we all kind of, we have a community meetings, we talk about it, mm, let's do this, what do you think about that? 
he comes up back with some sketches and we go from there. But yeah, I would, I, I mean, a lot of that work has already been done. I mean, we have a pretty solid foundation in terms of what everyone wanted and community input that we had, the, especially related to where it's situated. I think that's really important. Good point. So can I follow up on that? Just sort of off topic, but same. Um, has there been any d discussion with the school about going forward with any of the plans? Craft uh, or anything? I mean, I know this, this seems like everything's blown wow. out of the water. I didn't know if there was any fundraising conversations. Like, I haven't heard anything, so. I think it really got stalled with yeah. it's March, yeah. Sarah. Oh, Sarah, you're Sarah. muted. Sorry. Sorry, I thought I unmuted. Um, the the region came to CPA. It's my understanding went to the CPA committees of all the towns to ask for some money for the first phase of you know continuing the design and whatever for the. For, for repositioning the, the track and the football field. And I believe that our town council approved our recommendation for a portion of that funding. I don't know whatever happened with, you know, Pelham and Leverett and Shootsbury. They weren't even able to have town meetings for so long. I have no idea if, if they're gonna contribute money, so. Mm -hmm. But, but they did ask, they were trying to move it, move it along and Amherst did authorize some, but I don't think they will use it if the other committee, if the other communities aren't also contributing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Doug Thank Slaughter you. would know. Was that uh, last year that they asked for the money? In the last round, yeah. Last round, I mean, yeah. Right. That's right. So the funding Long is, avail is available, but I don't know if they can proceed, so. Ah, okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. So Meg, um, we don't really have to have a formal approval, but certainly I like to you know, see that we have support for these projects. If anyone has another project that they feel, wait a minute, we should do this. Um, yeah, even though the deadline's passed and we can, we can certainly do what we can do to, to try to make that happen. Okay, so not hearing anything, I'm, I'm taking that as uh, maybe Meg, you could get some support to move this forward. All right, should I do all three at once? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so I move that we, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Recommend? Yeah, there we go. I move <laughs> that we recommend three proposals to the CPA committee for fiscal year 2022. Uh, replacement of the lower pavilion at Groff Park, War Memorial Pool to House, Blasting Mill River Pool. Is there a second? <laughs> okay, who's second? I'm sorry, seconded was- There, there was a few. <laughs> a couple seconds. <laughs> I saw Becky's hand, so. All right, uh, vote. All in favor? Aye. Okay, unanimous. Aye. Excellent. Um, Alrighty. Okay, so uh, the next item is the strategic plan and the name change subcommittee. So uh, I would like to thank everyone for I, I, uh, you know their input. And uh, I feel now confident that we can move ahead with the four identified uh, areas or the goals that we want to accomplish before the end of the year, at least in some capacity. But certainly, I think the number one and probably the, the most, the largest or the most daunting is the name change. So um, I'd like your input on how you want to proceed. You know, we talked about a subcommittee. Uh, you know, generally a subcommittee is um, not necessarily everybody, but you know, if you feel strongly that we want, you all want to be a part of it, I'm fine with that. 
Um, but I know that Youssef is agreed to kind of help lead uh, and shepherd this process with Marion, who is on our staff, our, our marketing person. So, so we have a staff person and we have Youssef. So how, let me know what you all are feeling at this point in time. I know Sarah has opted out. Obviously she has enough on her plate uh, with CPAC. So um, what, what are we thinking around this? I would like to be involved. <laughs> I mean, are you, I mean, go ahead. Who would like to be, just by show of hands. Okay, so they, wait, that's, that's for Victor. It's all of you, okay, except for Sarah. Okay, <laughs> well, let's do it, which means another meeting, I, you know, <laughs> just so you know. So we'll, um, we probably then at this point, I'd like to have our meeting I'm just looking over at my calendar, not trying to leave the screen. Um, I was hoping for maybe the last week of October. If we want to get, if we want to roll this out by the first of the year, either the last week of October or the first week at the latest of November. How does that sit with everyone? I'm flexible. That works, yeah. Barb? Yeah. Um, can you give me a, a quick idea of what you think this will entail? Is this a one meeting thing or is this like a every day for two weeks or what do you see? It's, I think um, it, it's gonna be more than one meeting, probably two. I mean, we basically have to identify how, what our process is going to be. Uh, we have to develop some sort of a budget, I'm sure. And then we have to develop a timeline and how we're going to roll this out between now and January 1st, let's say. Mm -hmm. So probably at least two meetings. And the name that I've seen used in our materials for this meeting, um, is that it's the town of Amherst Recreation Department. That's, what is that? Is that it? That's it. That's very in line with the rest of the world. <laughs> Have you thought about the, the initials, the acronym? TARD? T-A-R-D? TARD? I think it's just gonna be Amherst Rec. <laughs> Yeah, I think Amherst is going to shorten it to that. I mean, that's something we can discuss. Okay. TARD is, you know, LSSC, because it was such a mouthful, Leisure Services and Supplemental Education Department. That was easy right. to do. But it's like Northampton Rec, Wilbraham Rec, mm -hmm. Amherst Rec. That'll be what people will shorten it to. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sarah. So I'm not on the subcommittee, but I'm curious, do, does the town, does the town have in-house graphic design or will you need to go to a outside a consultant for that kind of thing you know well i think that's something that we can discuss discuss as a committee i mean we did talk some around the edges about maybe even making a contest out of this to get community involvement um, we certainly have quite an arts related you know community here um, so i think that there's potential there so I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm saying no. The the logo that we had though was is is from the 70s. It's very 70. If you really look at the graphics, it's. I don't know if you remember the 1972 Olympics. Some of you probably weren't even born, but that was the the style of graphic that they used in those Olympics. So um, hopefully, I, and it does. You know, we we haven't changed it because there was a lot of pushback on on the name to begin with. So. Uh, we weren't going to do that without changing the, you know, anyway, so now we can, and, and we can approach it in a lot of different ways. I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of relying on, on Yousef to present some ideas, and if that sounds good, like if we put it out there, the community, or perhaps there's a, a graphic arts class at UMass that might be interested in taking this on as a project, that could be a, a possibility. The high school has a graphic start. So does the high school. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be fun. Yeah. 
So if we if we look at the 27, 28, and 29, is there a date that can't work for anybody? The trivia B is the 29th. Mm, okay. Oh, what? yeah. <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> uh, what time of day are we looking at? Well, what's good for people? I was thinking evening, but unless people would, I, I can do morning if people would do morning, but. I go to work for 8 a.m., so unless we're talking 7. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like 6.30, bring your favorite beverage and we'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> 6 o'clock so, is to work for people. So Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesdays tend to be easier for me. Can anybody, Wednesdays work for me, too. Can anybody okay. not do Wednesday? 28. Yep. Wednesday, 28th, 6.30. How about six o'clock? Yep. Okay. All right. That's it then. That's good. Um, does anyone else have any questions? I know that did did you all receive what Marion had sent out? Mm-hmm. I okay. So that will. I haven't had a lot of time to absorb that. Been involved in some other things. Uh, look at the kitty. <laughs> Sorry, Becky. I saw it. Uh, so let me, uh, you know, present it. Yeah. Yes. Is so, it the PowerPoint she said? Mm-hmm. That's what, okay. Yeah, I did get that. Okay. So you might want to review that and, um, we'll, we'll go from there then on the, on the, um, 28th. Okay. okay. So, um, I forgot about the approval of the minutes. Whoopsie. So let's back up on the agenda a little bit. There were two sets of the uh, minutes I sent out, one from September 9th and the other one from September 24th. And I apologize, I skipped it. Were there any, um, let's start with September 9th, which was our regular meeting. Were there any changes that anyone caught to those uh, minutes? Okay, so we probably should do these separately. Go ahead, Meg. You want to make all in favor of approving the minutes from the September was the date? September ninth. September ninth meeting. All in favor? All right, unanimously approved. Good. And September twenty fourth was, and I sent you some amended minutes from the twenty fourth. I where I did catch some things that weren't correct. Um, that was from the strategic planning meeting, which was a public meeting, so we did have minutes. Were there any changes to those? No. Okay, Meg? No. All, all in favor of approving the, um, what are we on, September 24th minute. Uh, With one abstention from Carolyn because she- Oh, I wasn't really in, on the board. Right. So, no, that's so. fine. I'm, in, I'm abstaining, I wasn't there. Okay, who's that? Oh, yeah, Becky. You can vote anyway. All right. Then all for it. I don't like to validate <laughs> if I'm not present. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I listened right. in. Thank you. All right, then. That little bit of business is taken care of. All right, so I still see no attendees. So I'll move on to um, my director's report. And I'll open it up for comments as I go through this. So our fall sports programs are, are in progress. Uh, most of them are going to run until November, weather permitting, but um, did very well received. I would say all of them are at capacity, which is great. Uh, so clearly the need is being met. And I wish, of course, we could do more, but we're limited in terms of, you know, numbers that we can take and uh, space and so forth and instructors. But um, it's actually more sports programs in the fall than we previously run, but of course aren't able to handle the numbers and uh, that we could potentially do. But at least we're we're providing a service to a lot of kids who need it, so it's good. Uh, we talked about CPA, so I'll skip that. Um, our aquatics program, as you know, the Mill River Pool closed on September 27th. Uh, and as of today, we've had no reports of any COVID-related illnesses, which is great. Uh, so as far as I can tell, it was a really successful summer. We had fantastic feedback and support from the community. 
and uh, just really uh, proud of my staff. They really stepped up. They did a great job in keeping everyone safe and and uh, just being courteous and very attentive to uh, to our uh, folks that use that the pools, both pools. So it was a good good season. We're still looking at ways, and it's probably a little bit premature now, but looking at ways that we might possibly be able to get back into the middle school pool. I don't really think that, that will happen this fall, um, but if we continue and we don't see a huge, you know, another spike, um, there's a possibility that we might get in uh, during the winter. Uh, so we'll see. The uh, swim lessons, however, it would just, it, I think are still off the table, unfortunately, which is um, a little bit disheartening for me, someone who uh, just, I think that's such an important thing that we, we do at LSSE is to provide, you know, really low cost swim lessons to anyone who wants to to learn to swim for, you know, it's, it's just, uh, we're losing a lot of ground during this pandemic, which is unfortunate. Yes, Sarah. So if we are able to use the pool, then it would be lap swim only? Lap swim and open swim. So we'd have free swim. Oh, open. It's like we did at the other pools, um, the outdoor pools. Okay. So it'd be a weekend, probably openings. But at least it would be something. Yes, ma'am. I know that UMAMA, which is the master's program at UMass Swimming, they started training at Hampshire, I think it was today or yesterday. Is there any chance that we could use Hampshire's pool? Um, yeah. Hampshire College, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I, know, Hampshire. I know what you're, you're saying. Um, we looked into that. Uh, before when the pool was down, they have a, they are pretty well booked. I mean, the Tritons are in there. Some other um, USA swim teams are in there. Yep. Uh, now you mama, that's new. I didn't know they were there. So uh, yeah, they just started. I mean, there's 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 possibility, and we should look into. That's a good suggestion. I can <clears throat> maybe there's time on the weekends or Sundays. Thank you. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, Becky. Actually, I'm wondering about Amherst College pool when they close at Thanksgiving and they're not coming back till late January, if there's a possibility since their students are all going home of trying to run some swimming lessons out of their pool. Yeah, it wouldn't be swim lessons. I would say, I would say right now the, the COVID regs, um, because of the close contact that you have with the children. So we're really probably I hate to say this, but it may be through this next coming summer, um, looking at just open swim and lap swim. But that is a, an interesting thought about um, Amherst College. That I know they're being very, very protective about their space right now. I don't know if that holds true when the students aren't there. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to Cherry Hill. Uh, Cherry Hill has done, again, this had had a, a record-breaking month in revenues. Uh, we were at, for the month of September, we brought in $37,709, which is uh, the best September I can remember ever since I've worked here. Um, if you compare it uh, to FY20, I think we we're around 20,000 or something. So it's, uh, it's just remarkable. Our overall revenues for the quarter are up 28%. Uh, so that's over the previous year. So that's um, pretty amazing. And as far back, for instance, so the total revenue to date for the first quarter is 104,000 roughly. Uh, in FY19, we only brought in 59,000. So it's almost doubled, which is pretty, pretty crazy, which is, but great. And the conditions have been, I have to say, you know, been up at the course and it's it, because of the drought, it's not as beautiful as it has been in other years, um, but because it's, let's face it, irrigation doesn't hit everything. And there's some brown spots and so forth, but overall, I think it's very playable. Um, we get, the greens have come back very well after being um, aerated and they, they are in good shape. Um, I'll let Yusuf who plays there more often than I do, chime in. 
Yeah, it's in great shape, you know, uh, like you said, based on the, you know, the drought we had, you know, there wasn't much staff in the beginning of the season, so it wasn't as maintained as it is now. So you're seeing there's definitely a lot of improvement now. Um, and it's just, you know, it's beautiful now with the trees and, you know, with the foliage and all that. So it's definitely a, a show place, and I think we need to make more take more advantage of that. Um, and one of the things I was gonna mention after, but I might as well say it now. So we're trying to put together a group of people uh, after the season closes to work, you know, to come up with ideas and maybe do some proposals to the town and and maybe justify being able to spend a little bit more money because it's actually something that's actually making money for the town right now. Um, you know, and we're thinking about who we would put on that committee or, you know, it's kind of like a, Barb, I think that's gonna be like an extra, like an unofficial committee, right? Like not a. It's an advisory committee. Yeah, like an advisory committee. So maybe some of the regulars, members, players, some, some of the LSSE staff, and or, um, well, the only, we only have one full time full staff now, but <laughs> you know maybe John Coelho, I think I can convince him to be on it. Maybe uh, like somebody from the different leagues, somebody who has to play like on the women's leagues and maybe somebody from the men's league. So just the different things and try to think of different things that we could do to, to justify maybe if we spend a little bit more money, I think we can make a lot more money than, than what we've been seeing. Mm -hmm. Sarah, I think you were gonna say something. Yeah. yeah, do you have any idea how many new users have come this year? I mean, in part, you know, between the closing of Hickory Ridge. We'll be able to tell. Uh, That's and, yeah. Question. Um, we because we're doing now tea times and it's all done on the computer. We'll have a better idea how many people, um, you know, come from different towns, come from Amherst, and so forth. So this is a good thing that we really didn't have the ability to do before. So we'll be able to provide that report at the end of the season. Right. Um, I also would maybe suggest someone else or some. It doesn't have somebody. From maybe the university, uh, maybe the Eisenberg's school management, sports, you know, management. If there's a faculty member that might be interested, I know there was a gentleman um, who did give a presentation a couple of years ago about the clubhouse. He came and talked to the commission. Um, he also might be someone who might be interested in being on the committee. So I can provide you with his name. Program too. Pardon me. I mean, somebody from the turf program at UMass. Yeah. 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 All right. So we'll put our heads together. This will happen after we close. Um, there's just a lot going on right now with some of our other programs. So um, not quite and with the name change. So it'll happen over the winter and it won't be, uh, I'm hoping that will just be take place over a few months and we'll be able to put some recommendations together and present those to uh, town council and the town manager, obviously. All right, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the primetime childcare program at uh, the middle school. So the staff and I have been uh, working on this now for a number of weeks. There are two things that had to happen. Our license had to be, uh, we had to put in a license application for the transfer of the location because we were um, originally at Crocker Farm, and then the type of program has changed. So we're going to be a full day, uh, we'll have a full day license, and we will be doing childcare as, as well as slash remote assisted learning so that we can assist children um, with their um, remote learning. Now, right now, we're opening it up to sort of as a trial to staff member employees or employee town employees children so we're going to start small and then open it up to the community um, after about two weeks so our our timeline got pushed out because of the late opening of the school so we are hoping now to open on october 26 tomorrow we have our site inspection which means the state comes in looks at all our documents make sure everything is where it needs to be and looks at our site. Um, so we are located um, upstairs in one of the, I believe it's called the girls exercise room, which is adjacent to the, um, the gym, gymnasium up there. So it's to the left, probably some people don't even know there's two 
large, large rooms um, that attach there. Uh, so that's where you're initially going to be. That may change. We may move to classroom space at the end of the, um, <clears throat> the other end of the building actually uh, at some date, uh, talk to the superintendent and it looks like winter sports are coming back at this point. Yeah, but you know, it, change happens all the time. So my thought was let's get established here first and see what happens rather. And we had already put our application together, put a lot of wheels in motion that were related to this specific space. So it was too late really to change at, at you know, this was Thursday or Friday that we found this out. So they're coming, the state's coming tomorrow. It's, um, it's sort of a big deal. So fingers crossed, everything goes well and we're able to um, do a trial run with uh, employee staff on uh, the 26th. So yes, Sarah. So what will be the hours of operation and the ages of children who can be? School, only school age children, K through sixth grade. And the hours of operation would be 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Becky. How many staff people have signed up? We have uh, four, two, three, five returning staff plus um, Grace is going to direct and then we're also use, utilizing our own full-time staff. So Marion, Donna, Nick, and uh, Nikki will all be taking shifts much like we did at the golf course. We're hoping that COVID funds will, uh, uh, CARES from the CARES Act will pay, help to pay and supplement uh, some of this. Um, but at this point, we're going to try to make this program free to everyone. We're looking at it right now, a maximum of 20 slots. And again, that could be increased later. Sarah. Just curious, do families have to enroll for five days a week or is there flexibility in that? There's flexibility. There is definitely flexibility. We would hope though, if, if they come to realize that there are hybrid models out there and some of the kids won't be in the dist our district, um, but um, you know, we're hopeful that they'll have, you know, I'm definitely, you know, the kid, the child will be there if it's Tuesday, Thursday, or it's not that there's, you know, just they're not going to come and go hopefully, because that would make it very difficult to, um, to plan. And we'll work with, you know, their, their teachers, coordinate their, you know, make sure we're coordinating curriculum and so forth. So it's a big, big project. But I, it's gonna make a lot of parents happy, <laughs> which is great. And, I, and I'm really anxious to open it up to the community. The other two programs, um, there are two other after school programs and this sounds kind of strange, but they're also located at the middle school. They're in the cafeterias, um, but they're only open to, at this point, to um, uh, school employees, children. Sarah. So you said you hope to be able to open it up um, as time goes on. So what what is the capacity? Or, right now, or what, I'm sorry? The capacity right now is 20. We only have seven families that are shown interest that are town employee families. So but, there's definitely- so do you think it might grow to be more than 20 or you just hope possible. to get between? Okay. We're gonna start with 20 as a max. So. May. So are they, are each, is each kid going to be following along with what their regular school day, regular remote school day would be? Yes. So <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> you know how that goes. I mean, well, yeah, yeah we're going to try. <laughs> so so that's why we need a lot of so, staff. <laughs> yeah, we do have actually, that's why we're pulling in the full-time staff. So our, our ratio will probably be better than one to five. And they're gonna be like set up desks in there for each of the kids? Yep. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's amazing. Um, I sh I, maybe I can take some photos and share them with you. Uh, how we have it set it up is, you know, the desks are obviously have to be a certain amount, a distance apart. Each child 
is allowed 42 square feet. Uh, that is all on the, on the floor in those rooms is, is taped off. Pathways are taped off with arrows. Uh, there's quite a bit of signage, um, but this is all part of the COVID environment we're in. Yeah. But yes, so it's all, it's all set up with the different protocols that uh, EEC has, has put out there. And they're going to use the locker rooms on that floor for bathrooms? No, they use the, actually, they're going to use the downstairs. There are two bathrooms um, that they'll be using, which are, I don't know, let's see, what side of the building would that be? A back floor? I guess the west side of the building. Okay. And yes. is that, so the door that, that they blocked off for, between the school and LSSE, that's got, you know, you have the key card to get through now. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, is that going to stay locked? Um, that will, yeah. that will be, uh, well, that will be locked during, yeah, once everyone arrives. So we'll be we're meeting people at their cars, basically, then okay. they have a health check. They have a, a series of questions, then the child has a temperature check, and then they're escorted into the, um, to the room. Becky. What would be the process for opening it up to the community? Will it go be based on need, like working with the family centers and the schools to determine like greatest need? I think there's going to be some of that. I think also we, we feel that we sort of have an obligation to our children who were in the Crocker Farm after school program. So we haven't established like an, a, a priority system yet, but um, I think I'll work with the town manager on that to kind of determine how that's going to, but there are, I, I hear what you're saying, and that will be difficult. That um, certainly it will be Amherst residents as the first priority. Okay, let me move on then. There are no more questions about that. Um, we're having, we, we have our challenges around adult and youth education. I just want to put that out there. Um, we're not allowed yet to use the schools um, for those programs or the, in, in any town buildings. So um, we're trying to do what we can um, right now that they're being held outdoors, but that won't be possible in the winter. So most of those programs will be done remotely during the winter. So just a quick report on that. Um, Halloween. We're having actually a lot of fun with this. This is sort of a, I love Halloween, so it's good. Uh, we have three, three different programs that we'll be providing. I think we've talked about that at the last meeting, but it's, uh, the first one is the How Do You Mask contest. So if you, you may have already seen some Facebook postings or if you go online, but <clears throat> basically we're providing masks to a lot of the different housing area, the kids that live in these areas housing areas and then anyone else who wants to be part of it. So they're the, their mask and the kids can decorate them essentially. And um, then they'll be on, uh, we'll post the winners and you know, we'll, we'll post everybody's probably and put them up. So sort of a, a fun, easy activity for kids to get involved in and we're getting a good response. Uh, and the other one is the downtown window painting. We're working closely with the chamber and the bid on this. Uh, we're, we are already full in terms of uh, families who are participating. The signups have been really um, well received and we've had good response from the businesses. So we'll have more windows, I think, than we've had in previous years being decorated, which will give it a nice festive kind of feeling downtown. <clears throat> and that starts, I believe this Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and the final one is the trick or treat my ride Halloween parade. Uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, you'll meet at the high school. Basically, they take that left as you come out of the high school toward Main Street, go down Main Street, come down um, North Pleasant, come down Triangle, back to the high school. And um, again, this is, we're working with a bid in the chamber on this. We've got embedded in this program, which basically is families decorate their cars and decorate themselves in costumes. And um, we, we, um, and then they're, they participate by driving in the parade. The police and the fire department are on board. 
we have a scavenger hunt embedded in this, which it's just blow ups at various different locations along the routes that the kids can get involved in. And then uh, the community businesses have been very supportive. We have, um, we're pro I don't know how many people we'll get, but we have a hundred bags and they'll have pumpkins and decorating kits for the pumpkins, as well as coupons from local businesses. Uh, for instance, uh, the, what's the cookie company? I'm just insomnia. Insomnia is donating you know, a coupon, a couple of coupons. You can go in and get cookies for the kids. So just trying to generate, you know, some enthusiasm around after the parade, go visit, maybe get a bite to eat or, you know, stay socially distanced, all that good stuff. But, you know, a way for, for at least the kids to have something to look forward to um, if families don't feel comfortable trick or treating. Yes, Sarah. Is that on Halloween? That is on Halloween at three o'clock, probably three to four. So good, it's a weekend day. Mm -hmm. Saturday, yeah. And uh, um, let's see, we also on that just rest assured, we worked with Rob Mora, Mora who is the, um, the head of inspection services and oversees the health threat, uh, health inspectors. Um, just making him aware of what we're doing. He feels very comfortable. We're following all the protocols and we have, <clears throat> we've lettered, we developed the letters that go out to everyone that registers. So uh, explaining what the different protocols are and what the expectations are. So there's no one getting out of cars. Uh, it's, you know, it's basically an in-car kind of event. Um, we looked at trying to involve people who didn't have cars and it, it just, we just couldn't figure it out. And, um, you know, maybe next year, if we have, if we do this again, if it happens again, then we'll, if this continues, I should say that we'll, we'll, we need to think about how we can get other kids who don't have transportation involved because that was a frustration. And I know, I remember, I think it was Stephanie who brought that up, and I, I agree that um, it is something that's lacking in this program. Yes, Sarah. Has there ever been any thought about painting windows in other parts of town? I mean, there are not as many businesses, but. There's a growing number up in, you know, North Amherst and the Mill, mill yeah. District or, or? Uh, don't I, you know, it, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> it's always been downtown. Oh, okay. I know that, uh, but I take that back because I remember at one point down where the, um, the hangar is, there was a bit, I think at the time there, there was a dental or an optician or someone who did, we did painting down there once. So I don't think we just, we don't necessarily limit it. I know we send out to just about, I think we send oh, really? out to the chamber. Okay. So there may be some that aren't, that I'm not aware of. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, why not Atkins? Yeah. <laughs> they got a lot of windows. They do. They do. <laughs> I can find out. We may branch out. Um, if we get more families that want to get involved. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh, I think, oh, so I'm going to skip past the strategic planning since we talked about you know, that in our next meeting and so forth. Um, obviously, I sent you out those minutes. I don't think we need to um, go much further with that uh, as far as an explanation. I will say that we are updating our rec track to a, a more current version. I know that last time we discussed, um, a, uh, uh, there was a lot of discussion about the website and so forth. But um, the first thing we need to do is upgrade um, that that version that we have. It won't be um, it won't be able to be serviced, and we won't have support. So it was sort of we didn't have a choice, um, and so the we brought it to the town manager via IT the IT support. And we're able to make that happen. So it'll be a much easier community, uh, customer service and customer interspace, um, allowing, um, for instance, well, there'll, be, there'll be a cart, much like you see on any website. So it's, it's, it'll be mobile, res, mobile responsive, which means you can do it on your phone. That's great. And then we can customize reports in ways we can't now as well. So just much better security all the way around. This is a really good thing. And we got a huge discount, which is even better. Uh, then finally, I just, you know, I think it's always good to make you aware of this, whether where the staff is working right now. 
we have staff working still at the senior center. They're poll workers. Um, they're still working at Cherry Hill. Uh, and they're working at the child care program. So pretty spread out. Um, we now, Marion will be setting up Zoom meetings for various departments in town. Um, she's also working with the town on the COVID-19 website that the town has. So lots, lots of different areas. Uh, Donna's working at the clerk's office two days a week right now. So we're, we're pretty maxed out. And uh, so just to make you aware that I think they're, they're just doing an outstanding job, just helping out where they need to be and uh, where they're needed, which is great. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate it. So shout out to them, to everyone. So that's it for my report. Any other questions or comments? All right. Uh, just checking to see if we had anybody. Nope, no, no other attendees. So unless anyone else has anything to add, I'll turn it back over to Meg. All right. Well, um, should we schedule a regular meeting? Yeah, I think probably we, we should. So we have the one on the 28th. So now we're looking into November. I'm away from the 11th to the 15th. So any other days, but the nights that by the, any of those. Well, I, I cannot meet any Thursday. Yeah, Thursdays are out for you, right? I'm pretty flexible, so I don't know if other people have, I'm sure people are busier than me. <laughs> How about the 18th? Is that a Wednesday? Yeah. Yep. It's okay with me. 18th at six o'clock? Yeah, that works for me too. Yeah. All right, take right there. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Wednesdays are perfect. <laughs> All right. Oh, good. Good. All right, then. There we go. And I'll put that in the minutes. Okay, so right, that, I will move to adjourn. Excellent. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, adjourned at 6. 59 p.m. I love these one hour meetings. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate okay. you, every all you do. Great to see everyone. Thanks for stay safe this evening. <laughs> yeah, Bye. Stay Bye. See you next time. Thank you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for letting me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get you as a uh, instead of a, yeah, you, for some reason, they didn't put you on as a panelist. That's crazy. <laughs> Oh, well, we fixed it. As long as, yeah. as long as I can get in eventually, that's good. Yeah. All right, see you later. Take care.